Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm a hospital pharmacist. Today's video is about my residency experience from start to finish. Residency applications to match day to the end of residency. One important disclaimer I really wanted to emphasize is that it's not the end of the world if you don't get residency. Trust me, it may sound like it, it may seem like it, but it's not. It's still possible to be a hospital pharmacist without residency. It's not absolutely required like it is for doctors, but it does help in terms of getting a job. Okay, now let's get started. One thing you need to know about me is that I'm a huge planner. I plan everything. So I actually had a master plan on how I would get a pharmacy residency. Everyone's situation is different, so some things might not apply to you depending on your pharmacy program. But hopefully this will help you map out and figure out a plan to reach your goal of getting residency yourself. Residency applications are broken into multiple components. There's letter recommendation, supplemental writing, letters of intent, your transcript, and your interview. I'll have to admit, my grades weren't the best, so I knew that I had to absolutely make sure everything else on my application was great and stood out. The first goal is to get an interview. How do you get an interview? You have to look really good on paper. So for letter recommendation, I planned this out way in advance. So meaning all the way back to my rotations. So depending on your pharmacy school, you may be able to rank certain rotation sites. So that's what I had the opportunity to do at my pharmacy school. I know not all pharmacy schools are like that. Some of them are location based, so you might be more limited. So for me, I personally ranked the rotation sites that I wanted to do rotations in much, much higher. Because if you think about it, in the perspective of a residency director, they'd be more inclined to pick a pharmacy resident that a colleague of a coworker that they know highly recommends as opposed to someone they don't know and they just look good on paper. Now you're probably wondering which rotations matter more. Well, if you're more interested in acute care, it's best that you get a letter recommendation from your medicine rotation. If you're more interested in AM care, then of course you should get your letter recommendation from your AM care. Or let's say you're not sure and you're planning to do a more general residency, which is, has a combination of both, so either one should be fine. So for me, my letter recommendation was from my medicine preceptor. Keep in mind that it's really important that you have your medicine or AM care rotation a little bit early on because if it's too late in the blocks, then you might have already passed the application period, the interview period, if you have medicine or AM care last. So that's why it's important to look over your API rotation schedule and speak to your um, advisor to see if you can move things around. So a CV is similar to a resume, except it could be multiple pages long, whereas a resume is just a one page summary of your work experience, your leadership, etc. But in all honesty, most programs are just going to read the first one or two pages. So that's why it's really important, really vital that you put everything you want to highlight first in that first page. Here's an example of how I organized my first page. So one, I put in uh, education, of course. This is controversial, but I wanted to highlight that I went to a good undergrad and a good pharmacy school depending if some pharmacy schools are more favored than others. So that's something that I want to quickly highlight. Next, I wanted to really emphasize my work experience as an intern. I felt like that made me a really strong candidate. So I really wanted to make sure that was front page. And the third topic I put was leadership just because I had a lot of extensive leadership opportunities and experiences that I thought would make me a good candidate for residency but you know you can put other areas that you think you would shine so let's say if you did research go and have put that first i say that's a really good experience to have and a lot of programs would like that for letter of intent you have to make sure you answer these three why's why you why them 
and why residency? So for me, most programs, I had a general letter of intent. However, for my top, I want to say five or six, I personalized those letters of intent. Um, of course, don't just name drop, just a name drop. They're going to ask whoever you name dropped and it's going to be awkward if they say, oh, I don't really know that person. So let's be careful when you personalize, just make sure that it's genuine and it would benefit you. You just submitted your last application for pharmacy residency. I'll go over the interview process another time. Let me know in the comments if you're interested. Hello? Oh, oh shoot, okay, let me check right now. I remember for match day, um, the results come out at a ridiculous odd, at, at a ridiculous odd hour. I wanna say, I can't remember, like 5 a.m., 6 a.m., who knows? But I just couldn't get myself to stay up all night and I didn't wanna wake up early. But I do remember waking up to tons of calls from my friends. They're just spamming me like, did you check your results? Did you check it? And I remember my, um, my boss at my internship was really nervous and she's like, I haven't heard from you. Did you match? Is everything okay? And I just quickly looked into my email, opened the results, and it matched with my number one pick too. So I was just so, so elated. I was just so happy. It's now July and you're about to start residency. You open the door to the office and there's seven other faces smiling at you. Some people find it really intimidating having such a large cohort for residency, but honestly, I wouldn't change it for the world and I'm so grateful. I was very fortunate to have had a great group of people to be around for an entire year. There's no sense of competition. We were, it's cheesy to say, but like a family. I look forward to coming in the office and hearing all the good mornings, good morning. Um, for lunch, we would all just gather together, complain about our day, talk about what we learned that day, something crazy, any interesting patient stories, um, any horror stories that we need to look out for. It was a good time. And honestly, at the end of the day, we always waited for one another to walk out together. Um, almost every other Friday, we would just go out, go to a brewery, or go grab some dinner. And it was nice having that camaraderie and residency can be really stressful so it's nice to have someone that you can depend on and sometimes it's just nice that you can just turn around and ask hey um i have a question i just need someone to double check me and it's just very reassuring to have here's a list of my residency rotations everything was six week block rotations excluding the two weeks of research that I had. Some of you might be wondering what specialty clinic includes. So in specialty clinic rotation, um, it includes, let's see, on Monday we did outpatient pharmacy, Tuesday was cholesterol clinic, um, Wednesday was arthritis clinic, Thursday was heart failure clinic, and Friday was renal clinic. One of the requirements for residency is that you have to be a licensed pharmacist. So most people aren't aware is that during this time as you're transitioning over from, you know, graduating and starting residency, you're actually taking your pharmacy boards in between. So for me, I had to take uh, NAPLEX and CPJE, which is the law version. So it's a little nerve wracking because you won't really know your results of your board exams until the first a uh, month or two of residency. So it can be a little nerve wracking if you don't pass. So with most residency programs, they have a grace period of a couple months so you could retake it and hopefully you pass by then because you need to be licensed by a certain time or else unfortunately you would lose your residency. Thankfully for my class, all of us passed our boards on the first try. So thankfully we didn't have to worry about that. Um, but something that you should be aware of.
to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. Hello to my loneliness. I guess that ignorance is bliss. Take me back to be bought the new. Rewind, take it out of cue. Innocence can be a young man's game. Signed up for the hall of shame. I wish I knew. Yeah, I feel like this video is really long now, so I'm just gonna end it here. I have a Q&A video coming up, so if you have any questions, I have a Google Form link down below in the description box. Feel free to add in your questions there. Um, I'd be happy to answer them.